technically when I have something like this, the pi over two can be written as one half theta, or not pi over two, theta over two. So you could say four sine of one half theta, to where you can see that it actually is a coefficient there. So my amplitude, yes, is going to be this number in front of my sign. My period, how do I find period? Pi over the absolute value of B. In this case, B is one half. All right, so you do the keep change flip. Two pi divided by one half is times two over one. So my period here is four pi. All right, so this is zero. Well, I'm gonna run out of room, so we'll do this. One pi, two pi, three pi, and four pi, all right? So what I do when I have these, now you'll be given the graph with your markings on it. You won't have to like create your own um, individual um, pieces of it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, where's my start and where's my end? Well, my start, I'm not shifting left or right yet. We're gonna do that tomorrow. Um, so I, I'm just saying start to end. So I'm gonna start at zero, right? And I'm gonna end at four pi because I know that my period is four pi. That's how long it takes. And then my highest point is gonna be positive four and my lowest point is going to be negative four. All right? Um, and then we have to think about what happens on a sine graph. For a sine graph, you need to find your quarters. So find your halfway mark. Halfway would be two pi, right? Find your quarter marks, which will be one pi and three pi. Um, and then you just follow the rule of how the sine graph looks. Sine graph starts at its middle. It goes up to the highest point at one fourth. It goes back to the middle at halfway. It goes down to the lowest point at three quarters and it goes up to the middle when it ends, all right? And this is a continuous graph, so technically it goes past the um, points that actually keeps going, right? Um, which is why we have our arrows indicating that. We have y equals sine of three theta, all right? My amplitude, my amplitude's the number in front of the sign. If I don't see one, what is it? One. one. My period is going to be two pi over the absolute value of three, two pi over three. So um, when you look at the graph that they gave you, they give you two pi over three kind of not really shown. They still have it in um, something like this. So they give you pi. They give you pi over four, they give you pi over two, and they give you um, three pi over four, right? So they break it up in force for you. Where is two pi over three in that? Okay, so if you need um, eight pi over 12, right? And this guy here would be nine pi over 12, right? So you can put it, your ending mark, somewhere about right here, right? Does that make sense? Okay, um, as, well, I'm not looking for exact, I'm just looking that you estimated in between the right ones. So I'm starting here, I'm ending there. Again, you can estimate the um, halfway mark too. Halfway in between the, th the three pi over four would be about here. So we're gonna be a little bit on this side of it to be halfway, right? You can eyeball it, I'm not looking for exact. Um, and then I know I have to go up to what number and down to what number? Up to one, down to negative one. So I'm gonna make my marks. I'm gonna start at my middle. I'm gonna go up to my highest point, down to my midline, down to my lowest point, back up to my midline. And so I'm just gonna draw that. All right. All right, let's look at the cosine function. So. Um, if you think about the answers to cosine, so if I were to say, what is the cosine of zero? You would say one, and you can see that's where that point is, right? Um, they have like the cosine of 30 degrees. If this were 30 degrees here, that's going to be what? Square root of three over two. Yeah, square root of three over two, which is just below one actually, right? And then the cosine of a 60 degree angle, which is here. This is 60. It's cosine of a 60 degree angle. Square root of 60 degree? Oh, one half. One half right there. And you can see that's where it is. 
um, cosine of pi over 2. Yeah, 90. Cosine of 90 degree is 0. All right. And then you see that it's just going to walk back down, right? We're going to go to negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2, uh, negative 1 at pi, right? Back up to negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half, back up to 0. Um, and then walking back up, because we are now in the fourth quadrant, um, we're going to go positive 1 half, positive square root of 3 over 2, and by the time we get back to 2 pi, we're back to positive 1. All right? So cosine does it a little bit different. It's actually if you were to take the sine graph and just shift it by 90 degrees. If you were to shift it over 90 degrees or pi over 2, you would have the cosine graph. Um, and so cosine, your start and end is at your highest point. So I start at my highest point. I end at my highest point. Start and end at your highest point. Directly in the middle, I am at my lowest point, considering whatever my amplitude is. And then at my one-fourth and my three-fourths mark, I'm at my midline, okay? This is the markings for the cosine graph. It will be the same type of curve. It's just going to be shifted on the graph. So it starts at the highest, goes to the midline, down to the lowest, back to the midline, back up to the highest. That is your cosine graph, all right? The two, all right? The properties of the cosine function are identical to the properties of the sine function. The amplitude is still going to be that number in front of your function. Um, the number of cycles is B, so to find your period, you say 2 pi over B. 2 pi over B. And you can see they look just alike. So if I were to take this function here and shift it, I would get this guy, all right? They are literally the same wave. They're just shifted as to where they start and where they end, all right? So let's look at one. They said sketch the graph of y equals 1.5 cosine of 2 theta. 1.5 cosine of 2 theta. All right, so we're going to start with finding our amplitude. What is my amplitude here? It's 1.5. So I'm going to go up to 1.5 and down to negative 1.5. Um, my period. Yeah, it's just going to be just pi actually, right? So we're going to say 2 pi over 2. Yep, 2 is my b. So it's going to cycle in just 1 pi. So I'll do this to make it a little easier on myself. If this is pi, the 2 pi is over here. So this is pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4. My starting point is going to be here, ending point here, halfway, 1 quarter, Three quarters, all right? So where am I going to start for this one? Where am I going to start? Positive 1. Positive 1.5, right? Oh, then at pi over 4, we go back to our middle. At pi over 2, we go down to negative 1.5. At 3 pi over 4, we go up to our middle. And at pi, we go up to our highest point. And so it's going to look like this. All right, easy enough. Wave motion, all right? The figures at the right show the vertical motion of a water molecule as a wave move, moves by. Suppose 10 inch waves occur every four seconds. Write an equation that models the height of the water molecule as it moves from crest to crest. And we're using the cosine function to do this, all right? So if I want to find my amplitude, remember before we had like the function in front of us, what did we do to find our amplitude when we just had a picture of a graph? What did we do to find our amplitude? Minimum minus, or maximum minus minimum over two. We take our highest number and our lowest number and we average them, right? So they've told us what our highest and lowest added together is. How high are these waves from peak to valley? It's 10 inches. So that means that my amplitude here is going to be the total divided by two, right? My amplitude here is going to be the total height of the wave from peak to um, valley, right? Divided by 2, which is 10. And so 10 divided by 2, we're going to get an amplitude of 5, all right? They also told me that the wave occurs every 4 seconds, right? Every 4 seconds. So they just told me my period, right? I don't need to know my period, though, to set up the equation. I actually need to know what B is. 
So what is my formula for finding my period? 2 pi over b, absolute value of b just in case. Um, and we know that equals 4, right? So then how do I solve for b? You're going to keep change flip? You're going to multiply. Yeah, you can flip both sides if you want to. Um, you yeah, multiply? you can multiply by b and then divide by 4. So there's a couple ways to do this. Can you just simplify the 2 and the 4? We can't simplify the 2 and the 4 just yet. You could cross multiply if you wanted to. Right, so I'll show you both ways. You can multiply by b, you get 2 pi equals 4b, and then divide by 4. So you get what? Pi over 2, right, is your b. Or if you have it set up like this, 2 pi over b equals 4 over 1, you can cross multiply. And you're going to get the same thing, 2 pi equals 4b, and pi over 2 is b. Right, so there are several ways you can do this to solve for it. Um, but we get our B. So we have our amplitude, we have our A, we have our B, and so we're actually just gonna put it, they want us to write the function. The function would be Y equals, what goes in front of my cosine? Uh, Five, yeah, amplitude. Cosine, and what goes in front of my theta? B, B, B which is pi over two, two, right? Pi over two, okay? Are those gonna be, there's something like that gonna be The tangent function. The graph shows the tangent function, y equals tangent of theta. Since the period is pi, the asymptote that occurs at theta equals pi over 2 repeats every pi units. So why is the period different? So let's think about our unit circle. Hopefully you have your unit circles handy. Um, you'll notice that your sine and cosine actually change numbers and they change negatives, right? But if you look at your tangent, what happens? Well, it is the same two numbers over each other, right? The same two numbers over each other. It's just positive to negative. So the tangent actually starts repeating in the um, between. So if you were to go on the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, you actually have all of the tangents that you could get. And so it actually repeats at every pi over 2. Um, and so if you look, pi over 2 actually has an asymptote. Well, what is tangent? Tangent is y over x, right? Your sine over your cosine. Look on your unit circle and tell me what would happen to the tangent at pi over 2. What two numbers would you have over each other at uh, pi over 2? 1 over 0. That's a problem. Why is that a problem? Yeah. Right. And so at... And it's not removable. Remember, removable holes and non-removable are um, asymptotes, right? We talked about that when we did graphing. And so here, you'll notice that we have this dashed line that the tangent doesn't touch. And then over here at negative pi over 2, we have this dashed line that it does not touch, okay? And then you have an infinite graph because there is not a domain cap. Um, or a range cap, rather, on your tangent function. All right, it is any two numbers over each other. Whereas your sine and cosine, remember with Sokotoa, um, hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse over, um, or adjacent and opposite over hypotenuse for your sine and cosine, right? Well, your hypotenuse is always which side of your tri right triangle? The longest side. So that's why sine and cosine can never be bigger than one because they're over the longest side. So you'll never have an adjacent side that's longer than the hypotenuse. So you have a cap on your sine and cosine that's one and negative one, right? And you can adjust those by multiplying them by something, but you have a cap as far as the general range of just a sine and cosine. For tangent, you don't, because it's any two sides over each other. It can be bigger than one. Tangent can definitely be bigger than one, all right? And so this is why the, the tangent function looks this way. The graph approaches those, and then it will just repeat. What will happen after this is you will have the same exact thing again for the next pi cycle, right? And so your, your tangent function will just literally keep repeating itself over and over, and it'll look the same over and over or repeat.